Hello everyone, welcome to KSR Data Vision. My name is SI Babu. Today I am going to explore about how to analyze the data with Spark notebooks in Microsoft Fabric environment. So as part of uh, today topic, the agenda is how to create a lake house and after creation of lake house, how we can upload the files into the lake house. Then later, how to create a notebook after creation of notebook, how to create a data frame in that notebook uh, by using the uploaded files. Then how we can explore the data in a data frame uh, by using that uploaded files. Later, how we can save the data frame in a Delta table format by using the Spark notebook. So let's jump into the fabric environment. So if you see, this is my fabric environment. In this, I have a workspace called fabric underscore demo. So first of all, if you need to create any lake house data flow or warehouse, you should have the fabric trial license. So how we get to know that we have the fabric license assigned to the our workspace, just click on this workspace settings. Once if you click on the workspace settings, it will open the workspace settings in that you can click on the license info. In the license inflow once it will open it is clearly showing that i enabled trial license for my fabric demo workspace then let me close this now as part of today agenda what is the first point first i need to create a lake house so for that what i'll do i'll click on the new item once if i click on the new item so there will be a pop-up here we have to create lot of items in this what i want i want lake house just i will search lake then it will show as a lake house then i will click on the lake house what i will do i will create a lake house then i have to give a one name so i will give fabric lake house lh means lake house then i will click on create now it will create a lake house and uh, along with this lake house it will create a sql analytics endpoint so now my lake house is opening so as part of today's agenda what is my next step i want to upload a files or folders so for that what i will do i will click on the files in the files we have a option three dots in that in click on in three dots we have a lot of options here there now i will upload a folder containing the csv files so i will click on the upload folder once i click on the upload folder so it will pop up a one upload folder window then if you want to upload any folder or file then click on this folder symbol so if once I click on this folder symbol, so actually there is a folder called orders in this folder. There is a folder called orders. If I click on the orders, then I'll click on the upload. So it is asking upload three files to this site. Already there is a three CSV files is there. Then I'll click on the upload. So once I, if I click on the upload, it will upload the that folder orders folder along with the whatever the files we have in the that orders folder. Now I will close this. So if after closing this is if you see whatever the folder I have in my on premises that I pulled by using the upload action. So if I click on the orders folder, so I have three CSV files 2019 CSV 2020 CSV 2021 CSV. So first let me see what is the data in this. If I click on this CSV file, it will just preview a data in the plain CSV format. So it's like something order ID, order line ID, date, something is there. Next, what we will do, I will create a new notebook. So for that, what we have to do here, there is an option called open new notebook. In that, you can click on the drop down. Just if you have a already existing notebook, you can select an existing notebook and you can open it. And if you don't have existing notebook, just click on the new notebook. Once if you click the new notebook, it will create a new notebook. So now it is creating a notebook. So if you see here spark notebook created. So if uh, I want to rename my notebook, just I'll click on I'll rename. This is a orders notebook and I'll rename my notebook. So this is the fabric environment notebook user interface. Here you can write the code in the different languages. If you click on this option, you can write in 
PySpark, you can write in Spark Scala, you can write it in Spark SQL, and you can write it in Spark R. And uh, recent in recent update, they introduced it. We can write it in Python, and or else you can write it in TSQL language also. So now what I will do, I will click on the Lake House. If once I, I click on the Lake House, it's opening. So whatever the folder we uploaded, that folder is here. So now I'll click on the orders. If I click on the orders, whatever the files here, the all three files will appear here. Now, if I want to load this CSV file to my Spark notebook, there are two ways. One, click on these three dots, just load data into the Spark. Click on the Spark. So it is automatically written the Spark code. And there is a one more way. So let me delete this. So if you want to load the CSV file, just click and hold, drag here. So either both way, you can load the csv files into your spark notebook so now i'll hide this just here what i am doing i am reading the data from this orders folder so if i click on the run cell while it is running uh, first time it will take some uh, one or two minutes time because the session should be started yes standard session now it is running now see if you see here the data is loaded so if you see actually the values here it is the top row, first row, it is converted as a headers of that table. So what I will do here in this option header true, I'll change this command as a false. Then again, I'll run this command. Now, if I run this command, now it will, headers will show as a some default assigned number c0 c1 c2 c3 so this table this csv file we don't have any header names so for this what we need to do we need to assign a we need to create a one uh, default schema so for adding new code cell just click on this plus code symbol so if i click on code it will open a new code cell so now i want to create a schema for this what i need to do already i created a one PySpark script. Let me copy that. So before that, I'll explain what is the column one, what is the column two and what is the remaining. So column one is related to sales order number and column two is related to sales order line number and column three is related to order date and column four is having the customer names and column five having the emails and column six having the items and column seven having the quantity and followed by column eight and column nine having the unit price and tax. So now let me copy this code. So let me paste it here. So here, if you observe what here I'm doing, first I'm importing the PySpark SQL types, then I'm creating a schema. So whatever the here we have the columns, according to that columns, I created a sales order number. It is a string type sales order line number is integer type and order date is a date type. I am assigning a column headers and data types. So then I am again sending that schema and I am loading that uh, 2019 CSV file to this data frame. And finally, I am displaying that data frame. Then let me run this cell. So the code is running. So now if you see here, the column headers is displaying. So if you see the previous table result, so here there is no column headers. Now here we have the column headers. The difference is whatever the CSV file we have in that there is no column headers. But uh, according to the business requirement document, we created a default schema and for the default schema, we loaded that data into a that uh, default schema. So now here, if you observe, only uploaded the 2019 CSV data, but I have two more files, 2020 and 2021. So I want to load all the three years data for that. What I need to do. So let me copy this code and I'll open one more new cell and I'll paste it here. Simply in place of 2019, I'll put a star star means whatever the folders we have in the orders folder whatever the files we have in the orders folder, every file will be assigned to the, this data frame. So let me run this cell again. So why oh, it is not displaying? Okay, I want to write a command display slash df in bracket. Okay, now again, let me run this. So now if you see it loaded the all three years data, but here, unfortunately, we can't see all three years data. It will show top thousand rows only by default so if we want to see the whether it is loaded correctly all three years data or not how we will see then 
in this code cell i'll write a code so what i'll do from myspark dot sql dot functions import tar so here what i am doing i am importing the sql functions in the pyspark so now what i want to see i want to see all the uh, three years so for this uh, i'll create a data frame year equal to df dot select and year of column of here if you see actually we have a order date column is there now i'll extract the year from that order date order date dot distinct now i'll display the data frame so display year now i'll run this cell now let us see whether this three years data loaded or not see if you see the three years data is loaded from here we should know that all three years data loaded by using this code now what we will do we will uh, create a, some sample data frames so let's say first let me display this uh, data frame so in this if i want to see only top five rows after df click on dot then write a head command and in the head you can write a five five means it will display only top five rows of that data frame see now it is displayed only one two three four five rows i'll add a code cell now what i'll do first i'll create a data frame customers equal to df dot select customer name customer name comma email email comma item after creating this customer's data frame now i want to see the result of this data frame for this what i'll do i'll write a command called display customers usto m e r s customers now i'll click this cell i'll run this cell so now it is showing the data whatever the columns i took for creation of this customer data frame it is showing only those three columns so now i want to see the customers count also for this what i'll do print customers data frame dot count and as well as i want to know how many distinct customers are there for this i'll write print customers dot distinct dot count so now i'll run this cell so if i run this cell it is displaying the total customers count is 32718 and the distinct customer count is 32200 okay now it's fine so then as part of today agenda we created lake house created notebook and created a data frame and currently we are exploring the data in the data frame now we will see few more examples for analyzing the data in the data frame so then what i'll do and if you want to hide this output there is a option there in this three dots just click on this three dots just click on this hide output if i click on hide output it will be hidden so now what i'll do i'll click a new code cell in this customers data frame only i want to see i will apply some filter condition so how i will apply filter condition so let's say here if i go yeah i want to filter by date so let's say dot where where in this i'll use order date column df of order date equal to equal to let's say i'll take 20 21 0 1 and fourth then i'll display customers c u s t o m e r s okay it's fine now if i run this cell now it is showing only for that particular date whoever the purchased the items that customer email and item so if you want to compare the result here let me show the output here if you see here it is showing top 1000 rows here if you see it is showing only 17 rows it means it is clearly saying that it is filtered for this date what i will do i will hide this output now first let me run default data frame display dot head 5 and i will close the bracket i will click so now we will see one more example so now what i want to see the item wise unit price 
so i want to group by the unit price by item so for this what i'll do item unit price equal to df dot select item comma unit price dot group by item dot sum now i'll display this display i'll take this one item price then i'll run this query so if i run this query now it will group by the item by using unit price so if you see this is the unit price by using the now i want to save this data frame as a delta table so what i'll do i'll write a code df dot write format delta so which format i need to write that's why i am giving the format uh, brackets as a delta dot save as table so now i need to give a table name so what i'll do i'll give a sales orders then i'll run this cell if i run this cell now it is running so now it is command executed so let me refresh and see whether this data frame has uh, loaded to the tables folder as a delta format let me refresh so see if you see whatever the data frame as of now we are working the data frame loaded as a delta table in the tables folder if you want to see this output just click on this three dots click on the load uh, data just click on the spark so now it is automatically loaded in this just if we run this we can see the output of this sales orders table so the same sales orders or table whatever we loaded earlier the same sales order table here now we are seeing so now i'll give you a recap today what we learned in this video so first we created a lake house and we uploaded a folder having some three csv sales files and later we created a notebook in that notebook we created a data frame and in that data frame we loaded uh, these files uh, but uh, that uh, files don't have the column headers then we created a schema after creating the schema we appended that three files to this data frame then we explored the data by using some uh, examples like uh, we created a custom data from with selected columns and uh, we filtered the data by using the where condition and uh, uh, we grouped the data by using the group by example then finally we save that uh, data frame in a delta table format into the tables uh, folder so thank you for watching this video please like share and comment this video Please subscribe KSR Data Vision YouTube channel. Thank you once again. We'll meet you in the next video. Thank you all.